G'day Carbonites, welcome back to our breeding series in ARC. So today's episode is going to be all about mutations. I think I have enough information to to be able to explain it to you guys. Um, it's going to be quite confusing and uh, yeah, just, just be beware of that. Um, Alright, so first up, what are mutations? Mutations come in two forms. You can, uh, it'll either be a stat increase or it'll be um, a color, um, a randomized color. Uh, I've, from what my experience, um, it'll be like, you won't just get a color, it'll be a color and a stat mutation. Um, but that's not to say that it can't be just a color. That's just from what I've experienced. So, um, as you can see with this one here, we've got this color mutation on it. Um, this one's actually not too bad. I've seen some really fucking horrific uh, color mutations that just look fucking terrible. But these ones are, this one's actually okay. Um, okay, so this one actually has two uh, mutations into melee damage. Um, as the... As of now, uh, there's no negative effect in mutations. It will only increase the stat uh, two levels above one of the parents. Um, now that's not guaranteed to be the highest stat when you're breeding a pair of uh, dinos. Um, I have had times where uh, the low stat uh, actually um, mutated two levels higher, which was useless. So how do you tell if uh, you have a mutation. There's um, there's a couple of ways. You can go into the ancestral line, and up the top here you'll see uh, random mutations. Uh, this one has uh, one out of twenty on the mother's side and one out of twenty on the father's side. So in theory, this has two mutations, but this isn't always a hundred percent accurate because the random mutation counter will always get inherited by the child, but not necessarily always the stat. So sometimes it'll say that it has, you know, mutations, but it never actually inherited the mutation. So it's a good idea to have your uh, smart breeding app. There's a link for this in the description. So this program allows you to record your dinos, extract all the stats, uh, and when you're breeding them, uh, you can actually record how many mutations occurred, uh, which is really good. So um, we can see this one here. Let's go to the pedigree. So this one here had a health mutation, uh, and you can tell by the green circle around um, whichever stat it came from. I used both my base dinos, so that's why they're the same, and it's saying it mutated from both of them. But it's just because it was the the same stat basically. Okay, so I, I can straight away tell there that um, this is a mutation because there's no other way that it could get 45 levels into health um, because both of these had 43. So that's probably the best way to to keep track of it is as you're doing your breeding, just use the extractor, put your dinos into your, your library, and then that way you'll always see what stat got uh, mutated and and where it came from because this uh, family tree is just like it's, I don't know, it's terrible. I'm hoping this is just a first pass on it and they're gonna, they're gonna, you know, clean it up a lot later because like, even though it says, uh, you know, mutation counter, it doesn't tell you what stat was mutated. It doesn't tell you where it came from um, you sort of have to guess, and as well as that, it's got this fucking, fucking 14 digit ID number here that no player needs to see. Um, I, I don't know, it just clutters everything up and makes it hard to read. So I'm hoping they'll do another pass on that and, uh, and clean it up, make it look a lot better, easier to read. So the mutations are completely random, and... There's, it doesn't matter if uh, the vaginas are inbred or if they're fresh tames. I had, uh, th these are all the fresh tames up here. I had a mutation occur from this uh, Oxygen 39 uh, and this one here. 
the health and stamina. So they, they weren't related at all. And, and this one was a fresh tang. So mutations can occur um, with any dinos that you breed. It doesn't matter if they're inbred or, uh, or whatever. Also, uh, another thing to note is the color does not apply to the uh, 20 limit that you can have. Now, the color mutation is not always guaranteed. I did a few tests where I had uh, two of these rhinos that uh, were exactly the same color, exactly the same stats, and I just bred them together constantly just to see what would happen. And uh, on a few occasions, I actually got ones that reverted back to the old color. So they didn't have the blue at all. And um, we actually got throwbacks from the original rhinos. Uh, the, the stats were still mutated and yeah, but the, the color was uh, back to the original. So um, you can't sort of purify the, uh, the color scheme like that. Uh, most of the time it did actually come out with the colors. But uh, yeah, there was a couple occasions that it had a we had a color throwback from previous generation. So um, that's just something to note. Uh, if you're like me, you you try to avoid the the uh, insane colors. Uh, I honestly I just think it looks ugly. Uh, this one's not too bad. Uh, probably because it's you know it's a dark navy. I mean it's not it's not super bright and in your face. But some of them are, are really, really hideous. So I tried to um, breed them out of the bloodline. Which, um, honestly, can take ages. Um, now, I'm only speculating here, but it seems like once one of the parents gets up to 20 mutations, uh, no more mutations will occur. And I, I tested it for about four hours. Um, I went from getting a mutation every 10 minutes or so on, um, on high speed to not having a single mutation for four hours. So I'm, I'm only speculating here cause I, I, obviously I didn't try it forever, but, um, it looks like once it gets to 20, that's it. So it's very important to keep track of, um, your mutation counter because of the fact that sometimes it won't inherit the mutated stat, but it'll always inherit the uh, limit that you've had. I think I have one of those to show you. Yeah, this one here, okay. So this one has two mutations into damage. Uh, the reason why I know there's two into here is because I've bred these rhinos so fucking much that I, I know the stats and I can tell that that's two extra levels into uh, damage. Um, okay, so we can see here it's got two on the father's side and um, judging by these dinos, I know all these dinos here are clean and none of them had mutations, but there's also a mutation on the mother's side. And looking through here, uh, its mother had uh, a mutation into health, but that never got transferred. So we're still at 4,800 health. Um, so it's very important to keep track of that because that's a wasted um, point into your mutations, basically. If you were to breed with this, both the mother and the father's mutation get added together and then inserted into the appropriate line depending on what gender it is. So this is a male. So on its offspring, it would actually have three up here because it, it would include the mother's uh, mutation, even though it didn't get transferred. So very important not to double up on stats, uh, mutated stats, because you're doubling your mutation counter without getting the double mutation stats. Um, this one here, this is uh, an example of a clean uh, mutation. So we've got three here on the mother side. Uh, this one had a... Um, a health and a damage mutation um, transferred into the mother and there's nothing on the father side we just use the base dino but we got an extra point into stamina so we got one into health and damage from its mother and then it generated a new mutation into stamina so three out of 20 on the mutation counter 
and three mutated stats. So that's the way you want to run it. Okay, so uh, it is possible to get more than one mutation when breeding uh, in... Oh, I actually... I think I've lost it. <laughs> I think I might have killed it during my um, culling. Um, I, had, uh, I had two dinos that I wanted to show you. There was uh, a dino that had an oxygen and a weight mutation in the one session. So um, it is possible to get two stats mutated. Now, in, I, I've got about 40 hours uh, clocked up in breeding these guys, and that happened once. So uh, it's very, very rare by the, by the looks of that. Um, also, I had another one which actually mutated the same stat twice in the one breeding session. So I had uh, a total of four levels put into melee damage which was just, it blew my mind, it was crazy. Um, so that is possible, I can definitely vouch for that. Uh, but don't get your hopes up, the, yeah. Uh, 40 hours of breeding and it only happened once. Okay, so how do you go about utilizing mutations the best you can? I'm gonna show you the, um, the absolute like perfect way you could use them. Uh, and then I'll explain why that's a bad idea after that. <laughs> um, okay, so if we have a look here, I've got... I don't know why my um, names have disappeared like that. It's it's really fucking irritating. Um, Alright, so I've got eight pairs that are exactly the same. Um, we I have one with a mutation into damage. Uh, it only has one mutation, as you can see there and I'm breeding it with a base dino. So the base dino is uh, basically uh, merging all the highest stats I could find for the creature and then creating a male and a female of them and, and they're your base dinos. So no mutations, highest stats I could possibly find. So I'm breeding those two together and I'm constantly breeding those. The reason why I've got eight pairs is because it's just like it takes so fucking long to actually get what I'm trying to achieve that like I need to increase my chances. So um, the base diners are very easy to get because once you get a pair, you can just breed them constantly and you you always get um, another base dino. The, the only exception is if you get um, you might get a, um, a mutated one, which is how I got these these guys. So uh, like I, I went through and I like I found a, uh, one with a mutated health, one with a mutated weight. Um, I just kept killing all those ones. Well actually I kept all the health ones. Um, that's all that group over there. So I'm gonna be um, breeding with those guys later. Uh, okay so I killed all the ones I didn't want, like the stamina, oxygen, food, weight, all that shit. And I just kept the damage ones. So it doesn't matter if it's male or female. And I also kept all the base ones because I wanted as many pairs as I could get. So breeding those together um, led me to these, these guys here. Uh, finally, after many, many hours. Uh, where I actually I transferred the high damage stat to the um, to the offspring and I also got another mutation on top of it. So we have um, two mutated um, damage stats basically. Um, and the reason why it's so clean is because we're breeding it with the base dino. So the next process, is to breed those ones, the um, the second generation, we'll call them, with the, the base dino as well. Uh, and the idea is you want to keep breeding these guys until you get another mutation, another mutation into the damage. But you need to make sure that it transfers the previous two as well. So basically, I look for levels. Um, looking at this, I can tell that a 305 will be the, exactly the same as this. We might get a 301, which is exactly the same as this. Or the very slight chance we'll get a 307, which has a mutation. I go in, I check to see which stat uh, mutated. 
most of the time it's going to be something I don't want <laughs> and I have to kill it. Um, but very rarely we will get uh, another one in that stat that you're looking for. And it's only going to increase the uh, mutation by one. So doing it this way, you can continually breed these up, get the mutation into the damage stat or whatever stat you're trying to go for. Um, and with uh, a maximum of 20 mutations, you can add 40 levels to whatever stat you want, which is fucking huge. Like, it's massive. Um, if you want to have an edge over your competitors, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely get into breeding. So an extra 40 levels. Uh, actually, let's, let's bring up the, I'll show you, I'll show you exactly what it'll do. Is this a base dino? No. Um, let's copy it to the testing area anyway. So our base dinos are that. They're 301s. Um, if we go an extra 40 levels into damage, this goes up to 83. So we'll have uh, level 341 base rhinos with an extra 71 levels that we can put into whatever we want. We essentially doubled our damage. And that's, that's, a base, um, that's a base stat as well. So like the more points we put, oh, don't, not into there. The more points we put into it, like the higher it goes. Now these are these are pre um, these are post nerf stats as well. So this is official um, server settings. Well, I mean for the stats anyway. I mean the breeding's off the fucking chain. Um, all right, so yeah, you could end up with a one thousand three hundred fifty percent melee damage, which is just insane compared to what we actually uh, started with. Where's a base rhino? There we go. 378. Okay, now the reason why it's uh, it's not the, the greatest um, plan is because it just takes fucking ages. It takes so long. Like I've said, I've had, I've had about 40 hours in with uh, just breeding these guys. I haven't been breeding the whole time, obviously. I've been um, trying to work out exactly how it works and everything, but still... Like, um, yeah, this is as far as I've got. I've gotten to the second generation. So my next step is to um, start breeding these guys up in hopes to get a 307. And I'm going to continue breeding these guys to try and get more generation 2s so I can increase the chances of getting the generation 3. So, yeah, that's, that's what I'm going to be doing. I think I've covered everything. I am going to continue on with these guys because I think it'll be really good to compare uh, a base rhino with a fucking insane rhino at the end. And I think, yeah, I think it'd be a good way to cap off the, the, the series. Um, so next episode, we're going to go through uh, imprinting. And after that, I'm going to do a recap of all three uh, phases in breeding uh, what what to do, what what to look for, how to do it all, all that sort of stuff. And the final video will be uh, hopefully the final product where we have um, 20 mutations in a creature and it's imprinted and then we'll compare it to a base one. Uh, but that is going to take a while. Don't, uh, don't expect that for a long time. It may actually take me months to, to finish that. But it'll be glorious when I actually finish it. Alright, I think I've covered everything, guys. I hope so. Anyway, if you have any more questions, just ask in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. As always, don't forget to lead to targets. I'll see you next time.